Welcome to Autopilot and this overview of the powerful new airspace feature. This video is applicable both to the airspace feature within Autopilot as well as the separate airspace app. In this video, I'll introduce the airspace concept and then describe and walk you through a few sample use cases, how to best set up your devices within airspace and how to take advantage of what you've created. To start, remember that what truly differentiates Autopilot are the modes that it offers and how it uses information to affect the flight path and yaw of your quad, as well as the tilt and direction of your camera. Autopilot can use this information in a variety of ways, including automatically tilting the camera and yawing the aircraft or the gimbal, in the case of the Inspire 1, to properly maintain focus on a specific object during free flight or a mission, directing the aircraft to fly around an object in an orbit or around a specific waypoint path, or assuming that Autopilot has the GPS location of the operator via your tablet or the phone, actually directing the aircraft to follow you, even modifying the altitude automatically based upon your current altitude. Airspace is a powerful networking feature that allows multiple devices tablets, phones, external GPS devices, or even your quadcopters to share telemetry information in real time, including both location and altitude information. Before we get started on what Airspace can do and how to use it, let me offer a few thoughts. Airspace is not for beginner pilots or those that are brand new to autopilot. Airspace is one of the most advanced features within autopilot. It builds on every other mode, feature, and option, as well as the optimal steps to fly missions, whether it's something simple like focus mode or something more advanced like using the quadcopter to follow another quadcopter performing a figure eight waypoint mission. As a result, I highly recommend watching the other videos, spending some time reading the flight school document, and using autopilot to fly some missions before you venture into airspace. Otherwise, you might find this capability and this video exciting, but overwhelming at points. Typically, using airspace involves multiple people, multiple iOS devices, and even multiple quadcopters. If you're looking to experiment with airspace, it's best to bring along a friend, ideally someone who is also familiar with flying and autopilot. I will walk you through some pre-flight planning concepts and then introduce these concepts in live examples. As with other autonomous modes, take the time to carefully plan your mission and properly follow the steps that I will outline. It will ensure that things go smoothly when you're looking to get that amazing shot. Finally, be aware that airspace is integrated into the autopilot app as an incremental feature. There is also a separate free app called Airspace that can be installed on a friend's iOS device for tracking or following without them needing a full autopilot license. Note that if you, if you are using your iOS device and have a paid autopilot license, we recommend using Airspace built into the autopilot app instead of the separate Airspace app. Simply install autopilot on each of your iOS devices. Here's some quick examples of how airspace can be used. You can introduce a GPS-enabled phone or iPad for focus or for following. One of the past challenges of following or focusing on a dynamic object is that autopilot needed to follow the GPS-enabled tablet, which was connected to the transmitter. While carrying a transmitter or tablet is possible in a car or boat, it's harder if you're trying to focus or follow on a person or someone on a bike. It's also awkward if you don't want to have the transmitter seen within your video. So if I wanted to have the quad follow a person on a motorcycle, I could hand them an airspace enabled iPhone to someone who can inconspicuously carry the device while continuing their activity. Autopilot can then define that iPhone as a focus point, allowing you to fly freely while ensuring that the camera is properly pointed at that person or even following that person or device. We'll show you how to do this. For autopilot to focus or follow a dynamic iOS device, it needs the GPS location of that object and ideally the altitude. If you have a Wi-Fi only tablet, you would not be able to focus on that object. In addition, currently only the 6.6 Plus, the 6S, 6S Plus, the iPad Air 2 and the iPad Pro have built-in barometers that autopilot can use to adjust the altitude of the quadcopter when following that device. 
If I was in a car doing a follow mission with my Inspire and wanted to use a larger screen like this iPad Mini 2 as my preferred screen, which does not have a network connection or a built-in barometer, I could link the Mini to my iPhone 6S Plus, which does have the necessary info. The quadcopter can now focus on this location and follow me. You are not limited to only introducing a single iPhone or object into airspace. Let's say you had two or even three or four different people that you wanted to be able to track and follow. You could give each person their own iPhone and install Autopilot or the free Airspace app. Then you can easily switch focus or even follow one person to the next. This quick example shows two bicyclists that were each given their own iPhone and we were able to focus between the two of them or swap from one to the other. If the device is connected to an aircraft, it will also share the aircraft telemetry with the other devices in the airspace. This allows you to have one quadcopter maintain camera gimbal focus on a second quadcopter or even a third or fourth quadcopter in a chase scenario. You can even follow the other quadcopter in formation flying as it free flies or runs its own mission. Airspace is fully based upon the ability for devices and their connected quadcopters to be able to communicate with each other. To do this, there are two types of airspaces that can be used to help the iOS devices communicate, peer-to-peer -peer and network. In a peer-to-peer -peer airspace, each device is connected via iOS's multi-peer network, which uses infrastructure Wi-Fi networks, peer-to-peer Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth personal area networks, Peer-to-peer -peer networks have limited connection range, but offer lower latency and more timely information. In a network airspace, your devices are connected through a network-based dedicated server. The benefit is that there are no limitations on the distance between devices, but you may have higher latency. Here's a quick chart summarizing the key differences between the types of airspaces. Remember, when I say distance between devices, I'm talking about the iOS devices, not the quadcopters. Before we put airspace to work, here is a process to keep in mind as you are putting together airspace missions. I'll walk you through this process in the live examples I've included to follow. First, take the time to create a diagram of the mission. List all your devices, the aircraft, and the role within the mission. It's also useful to identify the pilots of the aircraft as well as the carriers of the devices. The more detail you provide pre-flight, the smoother things will go. Next, you will want to ensure that your quadcopter is flight ready by checking your hardware, doing the compass calibration, and checking the camera settings, memory card space, etc. You could do this after you create your airspace as well. You'll next want to select and create the airspace, whether it's network or peer-to-peer, -peer, and add the devices, which will also add their connected aircraft. You'll next want to calibrate the altitude of the devices from the airspace manager screen. I recommend doing this here as well as when you engage, as it's, a, it's key to ensuring that the quad is flying and focusing at the right altitude. You can now configure autopilot for each aircraft. This is the mission and the basic parameters around that mission. You can now enter the flight dashboard for each device and calibrate the relative altitude reference. This is primarily for follow purposes. I personally prefer to start the engage sequence and get to the screen right before the final engage. This helps ensure that everything is good to go before the prop starts spinning and takeoff. You can now get all the aircraft in the air and hand out devices to your focus and follow subjects. You can now complete the engage sequence for each aircraft, which will initiate and start the missions, and then go ahead and fly the missions while monitoring the aircraft and the devices. Finally, you can disengage and land the aircraft. Let's put this process to work in a real example. We'll start with the case where we want to free fly the Inspire focused on a moving motorcycle. My tablet will be connected to my Inspire and will want to connect the iOS device into airspace. Since the two devices, the iPhone that the motorcyclist will be carrying and the iPad connected to the Inspire are going to be relatively far away, we're going to use network airspace. Tap on airspace first to enter the airspace manager. We can use the default name for our iOS device and aircraft or rename them. Now click enter airspace and select network. I'm going to create a new airspace. I now can invite other devices or pass my unique airspace ID to someone verbally. 
I'm going to send a text message to my iPhone to invite that device. Switching to my iPhone, I'm going to open the text message and then tap on the link which will bring me to a web page where I need to tap to enter airspace. As of now, you'll need to select either enter with autopilot or enter with airspace from the drop down, even if you don't have the separate airspace app installed on your phone. You can now see the other single device that is connected into airspace. Note that I will be demonstrating everything for airspace within the autopilot app. You could also add in the devices that do not have a licensed copy of Autopilot by using the free Airspace app. The process is exactly the same. Again, we recommend using the Airspace app only for iOS devices that do not have an Autopilot license. If I switch back to my tablet, you can see that the iPhone is connected. At this point, I recommend turning on your quadcopter, doing the compass calibration, and making sure that your quadcopter is ready for flight. Let's talk about altimeter calibration. It is important to perform altimeter calibration to use airspace effectively. This ensures that everything knows what the base altitude is. Calibration always occurs from the device that is connected to the aircraft that will be doing the filming or the primary aircraft. Realize that if both aircraft or multiple aircrafts are filming, you're going to want to calibrate each one. For the purpose of using airspace objects as focus subjects, you can calibrate each device or aircraft that you intend to focus on from the airspace manager. When you perform the calibration, the primary aircraft needs to be at the same altitude as the device or secondary aircraft that you are calibrating with. This will ensure that the proper pitch is applied by the gimbal, even when I'm flying the quad. Click on Calibrate and it will ask you to put the iPhone and the quadcopter at the same level. Realize that if I wanted to use the airspace object or the iPhone as an altimeter reference, for example, if I was following the motorcycle with the quad, I would also perform a calibration during the engage sequence by answering the questions appropriately. I'll show that to you in another example. Now let's configure and confirm the mode for the quadcopter. For this first demo, I'm going to simply use the iPhone location as a focus point in focus mode. Select focus mode, make sure the strategy is set to subject, and change the subject to airspace. Now if I select airspace, I can select the iPhone. We should now enter the flight dashboard and just confirm our settings, and then we can go forward with starting the engage process. I recommend starting the engage process from the ground and stopping before the final step before you take off. You can then take off and finish the engage sequence when you're in the air. I particularly like to do the things this way when there are multiple quadcopters in the air or if I'm using an autonomous flight mode. Select start engage sequence, checklist complete and select operator location and fixed operator because I as the operator am not going to be moving. I can now hand the iPhone to my motorcycle rider and send him on his way. Once I take off and finish the engage sequence, the camera will immediately start to focus and point at the iPhone. To be clear, under this configuration, I am manually flying the Inspire, but letting autopilot control my camera, both the tilt and the yaw of the camera because it's an Inspire, to maintain focus on the motorcycle rider. Once connected to an airspace, Autopilot will continue to run even if you put the app in the background. Background execution enables use cases when it is desirable to lock the device screen, such as this when I put the iPhone in the motorcycle's case or when you have an athlete performing an action sport. Now, if you're flying a Phantom 3, you can use cruise mode instead of focus mode so that Autopilot will take care of yawing the aircraft properly since it cannot yaw the gimbal like it can with the Inspire 1. To do this, you're going to need to set the vertical strategy to joystick, the joystick orientation to bearing or absolute, the yaw strategy to focus, and set the focus to subject, then airspace, then your airspace object to the iPhone. If you have questions about this, go back and review the video on cruise. Now I'll demonstrate a peer-to-peer -peer airspace. In this case, let's assume that I have an iPad Mini 2 that is Wi-Fi only, no altimeter and no GPS, and I have an iPhone 6S Plus that has both the altimeter and GPS, but I want to use the larger screen of the iPad. 
Because the iPhone and the iPad are definitely going to be very close to each other, we can use a peer-to-peer -peer airspace. Let's set up the peer-to-peer -peer network. From the iPad mini, I'm going to create a new airspace, then select peer-to-peer. -peer. I will then select wait and let my iPhone find the network I've created. If I switch over to my iPhone, select airspace, enter airspace, select peer-to-peer, -peer, I can then search for my iPad mini and click connect. Again, switching back to the iPad mini, you'll see that it asks permission to connect, and once I accept, Autopilot connects the two objects, and it looks very similar to a network airspace connection. If I swap back to my iPhone, you can see that the iPad mini is also visible from the iPhone. At this point, if you haven't done so already, turn on your quadcopter, do your compass calibration, and ensure that everything's ready to go. Let's go back to the iPad mini and do an initial altimeter calibration from the Airspace Manager. On the iPad mini, click on Calibrate for the iPhone. You'll have to calibrate as part of the engage process as well since you're using a follow mode. I just find this an effective thing to do. Now let's set up the mode properly on the mini. I'm going to select follow mode and set the distance between the quad and the object. I also need to set the relative altitude. Realize that this is 100 feet above the iPhone 6S Plus, not from ground level. It will show you how to confirm that. Make sure that the leader is set to airspace and that airspace is set to the iPhone 6S Plus. Let's also set the focus strategy to subject and set the subject to leader. You could also set the subject to airspace and then select the individual airspace object. Same thing. Now we'll enter the flight dashboard and start the engage sequence. Click on checklist complete and then, and I stress to do this, select airspace location. This is because we want the altitude to be relative to the iPhone, not the operator location. You'll calibrate the iPhone by placing it at the same level as the quadcopter and you'll be ready to take off. As with other autonomous modes, I recommend taking off to a safe location and then engaging the aircraft. Here is some quick footage from this mission showing how well the quadcopter is following the car, keeping the car in frame, and properly adjusting to the altitude of the flight. If you're uploading your missions to Healthy Drones, you can actually download the data as a KMZ file and view the mission in Google Earth. More on this in a future video. We're going to demonstrate another use for network airspace. This time, we have two bicyclists that we want to give each their own iPhone connected into airspace. We're then going to follow the middle between the two of them and show how we can switch between them easily, whether we're in focus or in follow mode. First, we need to create a network airspace. Then, just like we did before with a single iPhone, we're going to add two iPhones into the network. As a note, you can click on a link from an email or text message sent, or you can pass on the airspace ID and manually enter it. Regardless of how the iPhones do it, when we go back to the iPad, we can see that both of the iPhones have been added to the network airspace. You should turn on the Inspire, do the compass calibration, and make sure all the hardware is ready to go. We're now going to calibrate each of the iPhones by putting them at the same level as the quadcopter and pressing on the Calibrate button in the Airspace Manager. We're now going to configure the Inspire into Follow mode and have it set to focus on both iPhones. Autopilot will strive to point the camera in a way that frames both of the iPhones based upon how the other devices are calibrated and located. We're going to set the leader to airspace and the airspace to both of the iPhones. Let's set the altitude that will be relative to the altitude of the iPhones. We'll set the distance from the locations. We're going to set the bearing reference and the bearing angle. Let's set the focus strategy to subject. The subject either a leader or set it to airspace and then select the, uh, the two iPhones as the airspace reference focus points. And then as we've done before, enter the flight dashboard, start the engage sequence, get the aircraft in the air and engage the aircraft. And once you do this, the Inspire does an excellent job of not only following the two bicyclists, but keeping them both in focus. As before, we can change the bearing reference angle on the fly and have the quadcopter look at these bicyclists from another angle. If we want, we can also change the focus point to following both bicyclists to following a single bicyclist. 
or even changing the focus to a different person altogether. The Inspire is now set to follow the bicyclist in the back and ignore the bicyclist in the front. If an airspace device is also connected to another quadcopter, the other quadcopter is added to the network or peer-to-peer -peer airspace for focus, follow, etc. In this demo, the Inspire will be configured to rotate around a house and orbit around a house, and we're going to set the Phantom 3 to follow and remain focused on the Inspire throughout the mission. I will be flying my Phantom 3 standing next to my friend flying his Inspire. As a result, we can use a peer-to-peer -peer airspace. On the iPad connected to the Inspire, I'll create a peer-to-peer -peer airspace and then wait for the other tablet to connect. Swapping back to the Phantom 3, I can search for the peer-to-peer -peer network that was created and add myself to it. Once accepted, you'll see the iPad and the Inspire, in this case labeled My DJI Aircraft, in the Phantom 3's airspace. Since the Phantom 3 needs to know the relative altitude of the Inspire, I need to calibrate the Phantom 3 to the Inspire. I'm selecting My DJI Aircraft, which is the Inspire, and ensuring that they are at the same altitude on the ground. I can now set up the orbit mission for the Inspire, a simple circle around the building while focused on that building. I could have had the Inspire focused on the Phantom 3 or something else if I wanted to. Now I need to configure the Phantom 3. I'm going to set it up in follow mode. The one semi-tricky thing to realize with this setup is that we want to ensure that the quad stays out of the path of the Inspire. If you want to have the second aircraft flying in a circle outside of the first aircraft, the Inspire, which is flying in a clockwise manner, I need to set the bearing reference to course and the bearing angle to left. If the Inspire was actually flying in a counterclockwise way, the bearing angle would need to be right. Let's also make sure that the focus strategy is set to subject and the subject set to airspace and the airspace is set to the other aircraft. We, can also, we also need to make sure that the leader is set to airspace and set to the other aircraft. Now, before we take off, we need to calibrate the Phantom 3 to the Inspire's altitude. Do not finish the engage sequence until after you get the Inspire in the air. Start the engage sequence, tap checklist complete, select airspace location for the reference because we want the altitude to be based upon the Inspire's altitude, not the operator's and select the Inspire. You'll now want to place the Phantom 3 at the same level as the Inspire and press confirm. I will now get both aircraft in the air at a safe distance from each other, engage each of them so that the Inspire is going through its orbit mission and the Phantom 3 is going through its follow mission. And as you can see in this slightly sped up footage, the Inspire is doing its orbit and my Phantom 3 is not only tracking and doing an orbit outside of the Inspire's orbit, but staying focused and keeping the Inspire in shot. While both me and the Inspire's pilot are monitoring this on our screens, this whole shot is entirely autonomous. One more example. Let's have the Inspire follow the Phantom 3 now and let the Phantom 3 follow a saved waypoint mission. Since our Phantom 3 and Inspire are already in a peer-to-peer -peer network, we just need to configure each of the quadcopter's modes before we take off. On the Phantom 3, first thing we're going to do is we're going to load the waypoint mission and confirm that the settings are correct. Go back and watch the waypoint videos if you need a refresher on how to do waypoint missions. Now we're going to start the engage sequence, say checklist complete, and then say fixed operator because we want this based upon our takeoff location, not another quadcopter. We'll confirm the altitude and then move over to the Inspire. The Inspire is set in follow mode and set to be focused on a subject, airspace, and my Phantom 3. I'm going to start the engage sequence, say checklist complete, select airspace, and then select my Phantom 3. Because the Inspire is following the Phantom 3, I need to calibrate the Inspire to the Phantom 3's altitude. I place the Inspire at the same altitude as the Phantom 3 and tap confirm. Now let's get the Phantom 3 in the air and engage its waypoint mission. Now we'll get the Inspire in the air, engage, and it will start to follow the Phantom 3. Now as the Phantom 3 autonomously follows its waypoint mission, the Inspire not only follows the Phantom 3, but it also focuses on the Phantom 3, keeping it in shot the entire time. This is some pretty amazing stuff.
As I've explained in other videos, more complex missions are just variants of these basic concepts. In this example, we have a moving figure eight waypoint with three devices and three quadcopters. To better understand how uh, what's really going on here, I recommend you check out Flight School. There is a diagram that walks you through what each of the lines are and how they work so you can better follow what's going on. I think the applications for airspace and the other autopilot modes are limitless. Please get out there and fly and submit your footage so we can see how you're taking advantage of the software. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.